Okay, so on this episode we'll be taking a look at the uh, Guild Ball Season 3 two-player starter set. Um, comes with the Mason's Guild and the Brewer's Guild. Uh, one, two, three, four, six. With six models for each faction, plus a ball for each. Uh, I'm not sure about the other minis in the game, but these ones are single piece, so there is no assembly to do, at least for this set. Uh, so, I mean, they look pretty good, don't they? Uh, so, uh, this episode we're just going to be painting some of these to look a little nicer for the tabletop once we get around to that. <clears throat> and, uh, well, they're currently not primered, and I really like having the color of the base uh, the way it is, so I think I'm going to again use the gesso to just primer the actual model part and leave the bases the way they are, uh, at least for now. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some primer on these. And uh... Okay, so we're back and uh, the gesso is good and dry, so we're going to start painting these minis. Well, most of them, since I'm starting with the uh, skin color. It's the ball, the uh, cat and the monkey don't really need a coat of human skin colored wash now, do they? I suppose they could. Could be a ball made of human skin, right? Well, uh. <laughs> so, uh, this time around I'm trying out something I've never used before, a uh, wet palette. Just made it out of a little container, a couple of sponges, and a sheet of wax paper. Kind of wishing I had found the artwork for these guys first. Because it's a little difficult to tell what's supposed to be clothing and what's supposed to be skin. Okay, back, back after a short break. See how the paint has held up in this about... Oh yeah, still good and wet. So, press on. Thank you. 
got a few ideas about painting the skin here. And uh, so I'm going to go do a little research and take another break to see how this wet palette is doing and keeping the paint wet and usable while I'm not painting with it. Okay, so I've done a little mixing here of uh, some different colors. Trying to get some darker skin tones going. Uh, not really sure it's worked all that well, but I'm going to run with it anyway. So, for comparison, uh, it's the undiluted and a little bit of brown in it. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, the paints are both from Privateer Press, uh, P3 stuff. So, there's some Midland Flesh. So I was using for the initial batch there, and then I uh, added a little of this Blood Tracker Brown to it. So now I'm going to go back over, I don't know, one of the old other models here, I think, and... Uh, darkening this up and get a little more variety here. <clears throat> okay, so mixed up uh, mostly Blood Tracker Brown with uh, just a teensy bit of this Kator Base Red to give just a slightly reddish hue to it. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit darker than the uh, previous mix, so... shades darker, a little more than I'd intended, but it's, it is what it is. Looks alright, at least alright to me. Start off with this real dark umbral umbral from P3 to uh, do these last two models.
Okay, so there she is. Okay, so after a lot of mixing, I've got a somewhat acceptable mix here. Uh, so, it's uh, mostly Umbral Umber and Blood Tracker Brown and a little bit of the Midland Flesh. Okay, so there's our third, or not third, uh, tenth and final bit of skin painting. So I guess now I need to figure out what I'm going to do for the uniform colors. Uh, obviously something similar to what they base color of the model is, so some kind of orangey yellow there, and some kind of blue for the masons. Um, okay, so um, <clears throat> of the paints that I have, I think for the uh, uniforms, for the uh, brewers, I'm going to be using this Rucksack Tan from P3. Uh, it's sort of the best yellowish orange that I have that's not bright. <laughs> So, that's not particularly obvious, but it is clothing painted up. I'll just move along to the next.
Okay, so we're back, and uh, I'm going to get started painting the uniform colors, or whatever, the clothing for the Mason's Guild, and I'm going to use the this uh, crystal blue from the Army Painter. It's uh, kind of a nice shade of blue. Not too bright, not too dark, pretty close to the blue of the models already.
Well, uh, 24 hours later, and the paints do seem to be still plenty moist and uh, usable. So, that's handy. Uh, I guess in that respect, the uh, wet palette has been handy. Nothing else. Except now it's covered in paint that I can't use, so... I've uh, got to get rid of this piece of paper and uh, get some more.
Okay, so uh, one thing I have seen uh, at least once when reading up on wet palettes is that you should not use metallics on them. Um, I did not get an explanation why or any images of what happens if you do, so I'm going to do it anyway, just to see what happens. So uh, here we go.
All right, so uh, we've got the finished paint job on all the models, and uh, got a nice layer of wash to really bring out a little more detail and give them a good grimy look. A little grimier than others, some of them. But uh, uh, let this dry overnight, and then uh, we'll come back and get some clear coat on it. Be done. <clears throat> okay, so 24 hours later, uh, minis are all dry, and I'm just gonna put a layer of uh, acrylic varnish on them to protect the paint job. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, matte varnish uh, that I bought at a hobby store. Uh, you get plenty of it for your money, and uh, in this case it you know, has a matte finish to it, so it's nice and flat, uh, so they don't reflect the light too much, uh, make them a lot easier to photograph. <laughs> um, well, oh, and it's uh, water-based, just like anything else acrylic, so let's get started. Oh, and uh, this stuff does gunk up your brushes a little bit, so I like to use kind of a, one of the crappier brushes that I have whenever I'm clear coating stuff with this. Okay, so that's it. Uh, got the clear coat on everything. The bases are still a little messy uh, because I didn't feel like doing anything with them right now. Um, I suppose we'll get into basing some other time. In a future video. But uh, there we go.